Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, and we saw his name, Regil, in Numbers chapter 10, and verse 18 of chapter 2, Raul, you got multiple names. Some people got multiple names. You got a first name, you got a middle name, a last name, a nickname, maiden name, aliases. Why can't the Bible? Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, he led the flock to the backside of the desert. So Moses, shepherd. Jesus Christ, shepherd. Joseph, shepherd. So he's on the backside of the desert and came to a mountain of God, even to Horeb, which is Mount Sinai. The angel of the Lord. So far, the angel of the Lord has shown up first to Hagar as she ran away. Then when she's put out, shows up to Abraham that moment when he's about to kill Isaac. And now he shows up to Moses on the backside of the desert somewhere. Appeared unto him in a flame of fire. Hebrews 12.29 out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. Now, these years at Moses, he's seen fires. He's probably, one night with the sheep, started his own fire, sat back to be warm, maybe grabbed some bushes and threw them in there. And he's never woke up or never seen a bush still there on fire. This is the first sign in the Bible. It's a natural sign. Jews require signs. And what is the sign? A bush that is burning that is not consumed. This could be one of the elements that Israel could use as a flag, a burning bush. We'll see others later that it's not the Star of David. The Bible says that could be the Star of Riphraim. So, he's taking care of his sheep. He sees a fire. His idea is, you know, he's got to keep his sheep away from it. Wait a minute, it's not consuming. It's not burning up. And Moses said, I will now turn aside. He's talking to himself. Bible people talk to themselves and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned? What's wrong with it? And what God's doing, He's getting Moses' attention. Come here. Come over here. And when the Lord saw that He turned aside to see, God called. God called unto him out of the midst of the book. Now, get his magic. He's looking like, why is this thing not? What? All right. Is this bush now talking to me? And said, Moses, Moses. You ever notice God repeats the name twice, verily, verily? And he said, Here am I. And that is the standard answer that men give God. Here am I. There I am. 
That's interesting. And he said, God said, draw not nigh. Stop hither. Stop there. Stop. Don't come any closer. Put off thy shoes. And you'll see this in Joshua 5.15. Joshua and Moses are both told to take off your shoes. John the Baptist says, I'm not even worthy to bend down and unlatch it, Jesus' shoes. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. All right, let's go to Joshua 5.15 and take a look at this. Because this is interesting. Joshua 5.15. Joshua Jehovah saves. He brings them into the promised land. Moses brings them out of Exodus. In Joshua 5.15. The captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua. Loose thy shoe. There it is. From off thy foot. For the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Now when we go back to Moses. Put off thy shoes. From off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Now what's so interesting like that? We have another first time a word shows up in the Bible. And you won't believe what this word is. It's called holy. God said, be holy for I am holy. Holy, sinless perfection. And the first place that holy shows up is talking about a piece of dirt. Mount Sinai. And that's not even in the promised land. And this is the place that God's going to come down and speak face to face with Moses. That the children of children of Israel got to put a barrier around his mouth. No animal can even come to this animal. It's, it's going to be strike through. There's no holy water in your Bible. There's holy ground. Dirt. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God, that's, that's growing, isn't it? It used to be this God of Abraham. Not a God of Isaac. And I got a Jacob. There's no Esau. There's no Ishmael. Sorry, magazine. Don't know if I can mention your name, but there's no Ishmael God here. The God of Jacob. Now, notice Moses doesn't say, Who are you talking about? Jacob had not only taken care of a child for. Pharaoh's daughter, but has been also raising her little boy to know Hebrew and Hebrew history. He recognized that when the point was, I am not Egyptian, I am Hebrew, those are my brethren. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now to Joshua, we read, this is the captain of the Lord's host. To Moses, it's God, the angel of the Lord. So that captain of the Lord's host is Jesus Christ. The angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ before his human form. So the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus and Moses. The other one's Elijah. We're not talking about Elijah now. Moses. That's not the first time that Moses and Jesus ever talked. They're talking now. And some assume, and I don't know if this is right or not, some assume that the Mount of Transfiguration is right where we are right now. This mountain is going to show up plenty of times. Draw not nigh. And moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. God. 
the angel of the Lord. God. God. The angel of the Lord. Got it? And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. There's only one group of people that God describes that to. It's the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and no other. My people, which are in Egypt. They're not the Egyptians. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. And I know their sorrows. So God, why don't you answer the prayer? Why don't you take care of them? God's long-suffering. God is patient. God, you won't take care of my problems. He didn't take care of the problems of Egypt right away, did he? You know, how long is this going to go until they're actually out? Right now, they're, they're, they're under task now. Even though Pharaoh has died. And I am come down. Oh, that's interesting. He came down to see the Tower of Babel. He came down to see and show angels into Sodom and Gomorrah. I am coming down to Egypt. And I'm going to check out my people. I'm coming down to see man and his religion reach into the heavens without me. I'm coming down to see the gross and wickedness, sin of pride and abundance of bread and sodomy. I'm coming down to see what you're doing to my people. I come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. That's going to take some time. And to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and to a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Nutrients. Health and sweetness. Natural sweetness. Honey is a healer. Honey doesn't rot. They said they found honey inside of pyramids in Egypt. And they've opened up the jar or whatever it's in. And they stuck their finger in there, I assume, or something. And then licked it and said, ooh, this stuff is good. It's still preserved. Plenty of grass for the animals. It's a land that is healthy and is productive. Milk is that life form from young whether it be cattle or humans it's got antitoxics it helps that child to, to build up immune and they say honeybees are dying I don't know how much that is true or not but unto the place of the Canaanites the Hittites and the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites you're going to see those names over and over again now. They don't belong there. And God's going to tell us later on that why are they not in the land yet? Because these sins have not been filled to the cup yet. And the day that they entered into Jericho by Joshua, God has had it with these nations as much as he had had it with Sodom and Gomorrah. Nations have a cup. And when they sin, it gets filled. It gets fuller. And when it gets to that brim. Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. God hears you crying. God hears your tears. God hears your cry for mercy. God hears your you, you want hope. He hears you. He told Abram 400 years. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherein the Egyptians oppressed them. See, God sees it. It's recording it, writing it down. How do you know he writes it down? What did we just read? He just told us. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. This is a new Pharaoh. The old one's dead. Remember Joseph? Take Jesus and his mother and go for the man that wants you dead has died himself. 
Pharaoh, that, that Pharaoh, that, I mean, Moses, that Pharaoh that's after you, he's dead. Go. Isn't that interesting? Jesus is everywhere in the Bible. I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Now, you get Moses like, oh, boy. That thou mayest bring forth my people. Who are they? The children of Israel. There you go. My people. Who are they? Scripture is scripture. They're Israel. Catholics can't say, oh, we're God's people. Can't say that. Jehovah Witnesses can't say, oh, you know, God says we are his people. Can't say that. Mormons can't say that. No religion can proclaim that God says, we, unless you're a Jewish person. Out of Egypt. Now, if you want to be another another Jewish person, a lion of a Jew, Jewish people that were not Jewish people, you better be the ones that were in Egypt and are of the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because there are religions right now that you can be in a, you know, a Jew. You're not a Jew. And he said, certainly, Certainly, I, God, I will bring them forth. Certainly, I will be with thee. So God and Moses are going to work hand in hand together. Now, that's not Jesus Christ working with the Father. I and the Father are one. That the works of my Father he had me to do, I do them. My Father is pleased with me because I do. There it is again. I have sent thee when thou has brought forth the people out of Egypt ye shall serve God on this mountain that's a sign Moses you need a sign Israel's built upon signs that burning bush okay which part okay, I, will, I will certainly I will be unto thee and this shall be a token that's a sign. Unto thee I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, the people of the people, for, the Jews. In the Bible, the people are the Jews. Out of Egypt ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Signs are for Jews. The nation is built upon signs. How else are, are the Jews going to know in Egypt that this guy who proclaims to be spoken of God, how else are they going to know? All right, Israel, stand forward. Open your Bibles, Exodus chapter 20, and let's. No, there is no Exodus 20. There's no Genesis. If anybody remembers Moses, they're going to remember, oh, you're the murderer. You know what they thought Jesus was? He, they thought he was born of fornication. And they even said it. We, we'd not be born of fornication like you, your mother and, and, and whoever. And they, I don't know if they meant Joseph or not. That's completely denying the virgin birth. And Moses said unto God, All right, let's go, God. Let's go. Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, We'll welcome you. All right. What is his name? And what shall I say unto them? Israel does not know who God is. been a long time since God has spoken to the children of Israel. When's the last time he spoke to the children of Israel? Well, as far as I can see, and I could be wrong, but when Jacob met, I forget where he, where he was, Bathsheba, and God said, hey, don't be afraid to go down to Egypt. I'll be with you. Joseph will lay his eyes upon you. I'll bring them out. That's a far. That's the last time I, I have seen that God spoke. Now, as I explained last night, it looks like Jochebed had some kind of thing with God, but he didn't speak to her. Open that. Open that lid of that that ark, Pharaoh's daughter. Okay, Moses. Well, no name yet. Babe, we'll cry.
Well, Joseph told him to bring him out, but as far as God speaking to him, there's none. They they've got their history. They know their history. They know that Joseph those bones were to come out. That's one good thing about Egypt. They know they know their history. They know who they are, but God has been silent. Where else has God been silent? Between Malachi and John the Baptist. Again, we see another part of Jesus Christ. There is silence between Malachi and the, in the New Testament. There is silence between when Joseph dies and then Moses now getting this, this burning bush. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I never was. I will never be. I am always present. Always. And yeah, he's out for an omega. The beginning and the end. So I am out for the beginning. I am the present. I'm the omega. The end. Thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am has said me. In French, let me spell it out. I really don't offer that. J E space S U I S means I am. J E S U I S, I am. It's almost Jesus with an I in there. J E S U I S. French means I am. That's almost Jesus. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord, Jehovah God, of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Well, they got to know who that is, because he doesn't explain himself. He says, listen, that God of your fathers, your grandparents, The God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name. I am forever. You mean the present God. I am present. That's your name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. The Lord's Supper is a memorial to the Christian. That Christ suffered and died and buried according to the scriptures and rose again. And he's coming again. So this is that look to the Messiah. Go and gather the elders of Israel, the, the old men, together. And say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac. And if you got who these are? To name out the other religions appeared unto me Moses saying I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt I'm watching you better watch out you better not pout I'm telling you why because God is watching that's Santa Claus the eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good. I'm, I'm seeing it. And you would think they'd say, well, if God sees it, why isn't he doing anything? Well, isn't that a problem? Job suffered. Jesus Christ suffered. Jesus Christ suffered more than any man had ever suffered. And God did not stop it. That's almost like the Trinity. You can't explain it. I have surely visited you and seen which is done to you in Egypt. And I have sent, I mean, excuse me, I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Don't you think that was a blessing to hear? God is hearing us. God is finally going to do something.
There's a scripture. And they shall hearken to thy voice. And they shall come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. You shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of the Hebrews. I think we know who this God is. So you can't be KKK and say that you're a Christian because they're against the Jewish people. I am a born-again Bible-believing Christian of Jesus Christ, the gospel that he died for my sins according to the scripture and was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. The Bible said he was Jewish. Paul tells us to pray for Israel, pray for Jerusalem, pray for the Jews. They are our enemies for the gospel's sake, but they are gods. The Lord God, the Hebrews, which met with us. And now let us go, we beseech thee, three days journey into the wilderness. That's never going to happen. That we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. For I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand, foreknowledge of God. How's that for a commission? Moses, go up to him, but he ain't going to let you go. I'm going to have to break his arm to get you to go, get him to let you guys go. And people will look at you when you got a public ministry. Well, where's your crowds? God already told me there's going to be no crowds. How many people got saved? God already told me that many are not going to get saved. He just said, go. He's telling Moses, go. And tell Pharaoh, he tells us, go in the world and tell them the gospel. But they are not going to hear you. Few will. You're not doing what Jesus would do. You don't know what your Bible We're doing what Moses. Moses is going to step up to the complete leader of the nation and say, Hey, can you let your unions and your hard workers and your hard hat and your, your blue collar workers, can you let them go? <laughs> That'll be like walking up to the CEO of Walmart. Can we have all your all your employees come out and you take care of your stores? It's not going to happen. He said, well, how would Moses feel that God's told him is going to fail? It's going to be the same way he told me when I started my ministry with the signs and all that. Go out there, but few. Don't you go out there expecting a big miracle. Don't you go out there expect a thousand people are going to fall down and worship God at that point. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders. Wonders. For who? The children of Israel. All those things are going to happen. I, I think it says ten plagues. That's for Israel. It kicks Egypt's butt. And that's where the Jews say, Wow, that's my God. I better not mess with him. It doesn't work. As we'll go on with the Bible. My wonders which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Uh, he'll, he's going to let you go, but you and Pharaoh are going to have an arm wrestling match. It's not going to be easy. And I will give this people favor, the Jews, favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye shall go, you're going, but well, it ain't going to be easy. You're going to be raptured. You're going to heaven. You're going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But there's a troubling Bible verse. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's not a good verse. Marvel not if the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. Don't you dare promise anybody who's about to get saved who is saved you're going to have a nice, comfortable life. I 
I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and shall come to pass when ye when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow. Now that's important because when we get into I forget where it is, I didn't look it up. But Egypt is going to come and attack Judah. And they're going to grab a whole bunch of stuff they're going to spoil. And it's going to be getting back what they borrowed. Egypt will get back. But Israel borrowed. When you borrow something, you give it back. Egypt will take back what Israel took out. Of her neighbor. And of her that sojourneth in her house. Jewels of silver. Jewels of gold. Raiment. Now what will those be used for? The tabernacle. Because if they didn't have that, they would never have built the tabernacle. God is going to use the Egyptian wealth to build this tabernacle. You cannot go hocus pocus and boom, there it is. And also, they're getting their labor's work. And ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters. And ye shall spoil the Egyptians. So here we go. Here's the marching orders. We're going on to victory, but there's going to be a lot of battles. <laughs> there's going to be dead. Death is going to be present. Arguing. Fights. Tragedy. Crying. Suffering. And for poor Moses, when they come out of Egypt, it's even going to get worse. That poor man. 